movie, we're going to talk about multiple regression, so regression on several different variables, and kind of how we go through the process of that. Okay? So in Excel, the process of multiple regression is exactly the same as it was for single regression. Um, we already talked a little bit about this when we did nonlinear uh, models, when we talked about inherently linear models. Um, so you go to data, data analysis, regression, you're going to select your y values that you want to regress on um, and then select your uh, um, x values. Um, in this case, I'm going to say that I want to do regression on all three variables, year, winter, and fish. Um, and then you choose an output range um, or put it on another worksheet or something like that um, and get your regression. Okay. So it works exactly the same way. I'm not actually going to do it right now because I've already done it for all of these. So this model is one where we have a population of penguins and we're trying to decide what their growth depends on. Okay, so it does it just depend on time, um, the year? Does it depend on how bad the winter was? So we have these coefficients that kind of measure how bad the winter was. Um, does it depend on the amount of fish available, um, which is represented by this third variable? Okay. And so the trick in multiple regression is always kind of trying to decide what your best dependence is. Okay. So you can create a multiple regression on the basis of all three variables, um, which is what I've got here in the year plus fish plus winter tab. We're going to switch over to that one. So I did multiple regression on all three variables and I got this table. Okay. And so what it's saying is that doing multiple regression there, we've got an R squared value of 0.996. Um, we've got a Y intercept of negative 198.43, um, a slope for our year of 216.5, um, a slope for our fish of 28.78, um, and a slope for winter of 28.63. Okay, so all four coefficients um, and we can put that into a model and actually compute values based on that, okay? But the trick is, with multiple regression especially, is do we depend on all of these values, okay? So you'll see from our F test that there is a linear relationship. 1.32 times 10 to the negative seventh is less than 0 0.05. Our R squared value is very large. Um, but if you look at the T tests, something interesting actually appears. So if you look at the t-test values for year and for fish, both of those are very, very small. 1.307 times 10 to the negative seventh, 6.19 times 10 to the negative sixth, right? Very small p-values, less than 0 0.025, right? So significant. But the p-value for winter, 0.716881414, is very large right, much larger than 0 0.025. And so what we would say here is that there's no dependence on this winter variable on the basis of this t-test, okay? And so um, you can see in the confidence interval that that slope, depending on winter, could be zero, right? Zero is in the range. Um, and so there could be no dependence whatsoever in the model, okay? And so what we're actually best off to try and do in multiple regression is to think about what are the different things that it could depend on. So if you look at your data, it could depend just on year, just on winter, just on fish. It could depend on year and winter, winter and fish, year and fish, or it could depend on all three, right? Um, and so what I've done is I've done multiple regressions. They're all, each of the regression tables is in a separate tab. Um, you can go and look at them and see if you just do year, um, the p-value is significant, right? Um, but um, if you look at these, you've got an r-squared value for all of them, okay? And so you can see for winter, the r-squared value is very, very low, 0 0.005, um, not close to 1 at all. And so that's indicating that there's really not a linear dependence on winter. Um, but kind of how do we pick the best model out of these? Should we do it um, based on all three variables, year plus fish plus winter, even though that t-test showed that there really wasn't a linear dependence on winter? Or should we do it just on year and fish, where we have a linear relationship? Well, 
there are a couple different ways to answer this. So one way to look at it would be if you look at year plus fish plus winter, um, the dependence on all three, that t-test, that p-value for the t-test being greater than 0 0.025 really means that this variable doesn't have a linear dependence. Um, and so that's one reason why you would kind of favor just basing it on year and fish, okay? The other thing is um, if you look at the r-squared values, if you look at the r-squared value, if you do a multiple regression on year plus fish plus winter on all three variables versus one on just year and fish, the r-squared value for um, all three variables is a little bit larger, 0 0.9960 versus 0 0.99597, right? But very, very close, okay? The problem with comparing r-squared values for these two things, for any of these, um, is that the r-squared value inherently goes up if you have more variables. Um, it's because of something called a reduction in the number of degrees of freedom. It's not important. But if you look on your um, regression tables, there's actually another value right underneath r squared, what's called adjusted r squared, okay? And so what adjusted r squared is, is it's been normalized for the number of data points and for the number of degrees of freedom, for the number of different variables that it's depending on. And so r squared is actually a better way to compare, uh, adjusted r squared rather, is a better way to compare when you've got like something that depends on two variables versus something that depends on three variables. And what you'll see here, um, if you're just looking at year and fish, r squared is 0.9948 versus for all three, 0.9941, okay? And so what we're going to do is we're gonna choose the highest adjusted r squared and say that that's our best prediction, okay? Is to do it based on year and fish only, not to include year and fish and winter, okay? And so from that, you can get a y hat, right, where you can do a predicted value. We're gonna take the m from that year plus fish production, um, which is, oh, I guess we'll take the intercept first. So that's this value year plus fish d17 um, and then we're going to do plus the um, y-intercept value times a2 I think was our x value and then the um, uh, third one of these the slope for the number of fish times um, B2. That should be the correct formula. So if you look at that, that's going to be um, our intercept plus our slope for year times A2, which is the year. Oh, I've got winter in that second slot, so that should actually be C2 or the fish one. Okay, so year plus fish B19 times C2, um, and that'll give us our Y hat. And you can see here, oh, I did not put dollar signs in these, whatever. Um, so whatever I did these, I should have done dollar signs to fix these. Put those in. So that gives us absolute references instead of just references. And so now I can fill down without danger. Okay. And you can see here that the prediction for the number of penguins um, actually tracks pretty well. So if I graph, say, my actual data versus my y hat. you can see this actually tracks really, really well, right? So it matches very much um, up. The orange is the Y hat, the blue is the original data, and you can see this tracks very, very closely. Okay, and that's because I, I set this data up to behave very well, um, and our adjusted R squared is very, very large. Okay, so the idea here is you're gonna do 
um, all of the different multiple regressions for each of the different um, combinations of variables, uh, each variable by itself, each pair of variables, all the variables together, see which one has the largest adjusted R squared, and then that's going to be your model for um, the actual data. Okay? One thing to be aware of, um, there's always going to be one of these that's a little bit tricky to deal with. Um, in this case, it's doing multiple regression on year uh, plus fish. So let me just show you the problem with this um, real quick. Um, if you try and do a multiple regression on year and fish, you'll get an error from Excel. Um, so I can show you this error. So if you select your uh, Y values, here are the penguins or the Y values you want to predict. Select your X range. If you're trying to do year and fish together, um, you would select this column and this column, right? Fine, great. That's easy enough. Um, but if you do this um, with Excel, you'll get an error. So it'll tell you the input range must be a contiguous reference. Um, and what that means is that the columns for year and fish need to be next to each other to actually do the regression. Why? I don't know. Uh, Excel just insists on it. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to move this data around. Um, so like if you wanted to do year and winter, you could just select them and Excel will be fine because they're right next to each other. But if you want to do year and fish, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to take this column, say cut it, insert it before uh, winter, move those two around. So just switch these two columns so that to do year and fish, you select that data together for the X range. Just a quirk of Excel, just something to watch out for when you're trying to do this multiple regression. Okay. So that's deciding which multiple regression is best. Again, you can do the adjusted R squared values. Uh, the other way to look at it is to look at these t-tests. So what you see here now with uh, multiple regression is that the f-test tells you that there's a dependence on all the variables, but the t-tests tell you which variables there's actually a dependence on. Um, because if you've got dependence on one of the variables, that's going to tell the f-test, oh yeah, there's dependence, there's linear dependence because there's a dependence from one of the variables, whereas the t-test distinguishes that which ones actually have an effect. Okay, So that's how to do multiple regression and the statistics for multiple regression.